I often get asked and often consider what the perfect old school daily for me would be. And I think it might be this, because this is a B5 Audi S4, which is the more subtle brother of the iconic B5 Audi RS4 that we all know and love. And I'm gonna be filming a video between the differences between the B5 S4 and the B5 RS4 very soon, and I'll put that down in the description when it's live, and I'll also put it up here as well. Oh, and of course, before we get into the video, please don't follow or subscribe to RetroGuard if you don't like old school and classic cars like this. And also make sure not to join the other 580,000 or so Instagram followers we have who also like exactly the same cars that I do. The B5 Audi S4 was made between 1997 and 2001, with this one here being a 2001 model. And the B5 S4 is obviously based on the B5 generation A4, which was the first time ever that the A4 name was used, but weirdly enough, it wasn't the first time that the S4 name was used. That's because in the early 90s, Audi made a version of their Audi 100, which is essentially the pre-facelift version of my S6, and they gave it the S4 name because, well, it was bigger than the Audi S2. But then obviously, when Audi decided for the C4 generation to change from Audi 100 to Audi A6, they made the 2.2 five-cylinder turbo and the V8 models into the S6, making way for this, because, well, the B5 generation changed from Audi 80s to Audi A4s. But that's enough of the history lesson. Let's talk about this car. So the Audi S4 differentiated itself from the A4 in a couple of ways. Obviously, this was more performance orientated and unlike the bigger brother, the RS4, which funnily enough, there's actually one pulling in over there. Well, this car was quite special because it sat in between the regular A4 and that car right there, the Audi RS4. Well, that's perfect timing, isn't it? But the differences for the S4 over the A4, for example, are of course the bumpers. This version here is a facelift too. Even the original facelift came with these mirrors which kind of tilted in a little bit. And also the facelift too got these new badges which are in a different style to what's on the likes of my Audi S6 and the earlier S2s. Interior wise, you got a lovely Recaro interior, which is just a really nice place to be. Unlike the RS4, you didn't get the carbon trim or you possibly got it on some of the models. And this one here has a six speed manual gearbox as well. Being an Avant, of course, you get loads of luggage room here in the back. Like all performance German cars of the era, you got twin pipes out one side. Honestly, I wish the German car brands actually continued that tradition of putting twin pipes on one side to denote the performance models. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of all these quad tip exhaust solutions. And of course, the B5 S4 got a different bumper, different wheels, although these aren't the factory wheels. And we'll go through some of the modifications that this particular car has because it has quite a few. But one way that you know that this car means business is when you look at that speed which goes all the way to 280 kilometers an hour. This is also a facelift model because it's one of the last ones of 2001. And because this is one of the 2001 models, it's also a facelift too. So the second update of the facelift, which gave it a couple of little details, such as the different badges, because the pre-facelift, and I think the facelift one came with the same style of badge as would be on like an S6 or an S2. The facelift brought wing at these wing mirrors which are tilted inwards. And from my understanding, because this is one of the last models, it also got the wing mirrors in chrome, as well as the uh, roof racks in chrome as well. And on the gauges, we can see the S4 logo. There is the new style as well, as well as here on the steering wheel. The Audi B5 S4 came factory with a 2.7 liter V6 twin turbo with a set of KO3 turbos, which put out about 265 horsepower. This car, as I mentioned before, is a little bit different. And that block of the engine pretty much contributes to the engine that's in that, although the RS4 has a Cosworth tuned engine. This particular RS4, even though it is on daily duties and recently just did a massive road trip of like 1,500 or 2,000 kilometers, it has about 600 horsepower. And that's done with a couple of upgrades, such as C5 or modified C5 Audi RS6 turbos which are the ones off the uh, 4.2 v8 twin turbo model from the early 2000s it also has an audi rs4 so one of those intake manifolds on it as well and the whole engine has been taken apart it has different con rods ori original pistons with different rings on it uh, and it also has the heads and i think the valves and the camshafts out of a 2.8 naturally aspirated car because those are a little bit sharper but yeah 600 horsepower in a car like this that is this understated is uh, quite a force to be reckoned with and honestly on the uh, unlimited autobahn here in germany it moves quite a bit
color on this car is called ebony black and it is stunning it has the kind of this kind of a I guess a bit of a flake to it as well, a bit of a metallic flake, and it is gorgeous here in the sun. And the car is really quite subtle and understated in the way it's modified. Like, you'd never be able to tell that this car has 600 horsepower, and it has some tasteful upgrades that I, I would actually do myself. I do exactly the same thing. So we have Audi Avis wheels, 18 inch Avis wheels from, I think, a D2 Audi S8. I actually have these in 17s, which are going on the Audi 80 Advance soon, which I got off a C5 S6. And I also am looking to get a set of these as winter wheels for my C4 S6 as well, because I think they just suit old school Audis so well. Behind those wheels then, we have modern Audi Q7 brake calipers, which are massive, with 375 mil Mercedes discs as well, meaning this car is well able to stop itself, which you'd want to with 600 horsepower. Honestly, the amount of people who do things the wrong way by upgrading power before they ever upgrade like suspension or brakes is wild. I remember when I put the uh, Cayenne brakes on my C4 S6, everyone was like, oh, why, why are you doing that before you do power uh, and before you do the manual swap? Well, because once you've that done, everything else becomes easy and everything else still becomes safe. And for this lovely low stance as well, it is also sitting on AP suspension. I'm a big fan of the B5 Audi S4. It makes it a pretty appealing prospect. Let me know in the comments if you think we should get a B5 S4 as a channel car for RetroGuard. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Please let me know your thoughts and also please don't follow or subscribe to RetroGuard if you don't like old school and classic cars like any of these. And also maybe just share it with one of your friends who you think should buy one of these. I hope you enjoyed this little video. We'll talk to you as always in the next one. Cheers, take care, bye-bye.